Uh, uh. Listen to this track, bitch. What bitch you on my podcast? Listening to me talk, worrying about shit that I should have never thought. Hey, welcome back to Instagram the Podcast. I'm your Instagram Fuck Ass host, Kelly Beck, and I'm not even recording this. This is just for you and you and you and you. Uh, this is just me wanting to say Merry Christmas. I realized that I don't really give you guys a lot of stuff. Um, I kind of just give you the audio and then I go in and, and the and the, the audio and over here and I kind of do all this cute shit and I just let you look at me be snotty and gross and all that shit. But this is just for you, those of you on YouTube, I want to say thank you so much for rocking with me for the 12 days of Podmas. YouTube has always been my dream, but I was always a little insecure about how I presented and what I was saying and that people wouldn't really engage with me, um, which is probably going to lead into my number one insecurity on the 12 days of Podmas. Um... Being able to just tell stories has made me not worry about the set or the the physical person or all that shit. So like while I know my viewership is low, this has been such a great boost to my insecurity about me belonging on YouTube because I do know that YouTube is one of my streams of income to come. So I'm so grateful for those of you who've been shooting in the gym. She's shooting in the gym. Now before before I get too drunk and too lifted and too ready to go talk about my number one insecurity, um, Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy I don't believe in anything but my dreams day. Happy you day. Whatever day this is for you, however you define it, I want you to make it the best for you and your circumstance. And I know that we can all talk about we're so excited for 2020 to end, but we all know that 2020 is uh, omnipresent for some time because a lot of the things and the traumas and the truths of 2020 will actually have to meet us in 2021. But I do hope that there's prosperity, love, peace, joy, abundance, growth, freedom for us in that particular year. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. All right, y'all, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year. On the first day of pod, Miss My Insecurity gave to me one completed project and imposter syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Insecure the Podcast presents the 12 Days of Podmas. And I'm your Insecure as fuck ass host, Chloe Beck. And I did it. It's done. This is, in fact, the 12th day, first day. This is Christmas Day. I'm recording it on this day. Oh my God. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I hope, I hope, I hope you feel loved, warm, secure, sure. And even if you're unsure, or dare I say it, Insecure, I hope you know you have a place and a friend in me. And just like that, I'm about to to tell you all my friendly business because on this first day of Podmas, as I completed the project, the 12 days of Podmas, I want to talk about something that is obvious, that could not be more clear. It's in the title. Actually, if I was going to do another title now that I thought about it, I would have just called it Imposter Syndrome with Chloe because of bitch. Oh my God. I suffer I, Chloe the Blank Beck, suffer from imposter syndrome, and on this 12th day of Podmas, or the first day of Christmas, I would like to say, one imposter syndrome. Um, now, speaking of imposter syndrome, when I talked about the things we don't know in episode two in House of Moses, I was like, yeah, 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 I know it, I get it, I understand it. Uh, even if people know the textbook definition of certain things, the ways in which we interpret it and how our traumas fill in the blanks or like make it make sense for us. Um, I kind of want to, I think we all have heard imposter syndrome, have our own opinions about imposter syndrome or what it might mean. Um, but I'm just going to give us a textbook definition to kind of to, to guide the conversation because on the Christ's day, the Lord's day, on the day where he gave us so many gifts, I want to give you guys with a definition for this holiday season. Um, imposter syndrome can be defined as a collection of feelings of inadequacies that persist despite evident success. Imposters suffer from chronic self-doubt and a sense of intellectual fraudulence that override any feelings of success or external proof of their competence. Hi, I'm Chloe Beck, and if you look up my name in the dictionary, it'll be next to this uh, definition of an imposter, and that's not how that works, but you know what I mean. Um, to be fully <laughs> to be fully transparent, I have never looked at a textbook definition of imposter syndrome because I kind of always inferred and and thought I understood it based on the context that it had been thrown out or if I had heard it. And the funny thing about that, because once I said, once you deprive yourself from saying, I don't know, and then going to find the answer, 
I have been living with imposter syndrome, but I did not believe I did because of how I interpreted it. I always thought imposter syndrome was like, oh, you're a black woman in the office and you don't belong there or you don't think you belong there because you're black, right? I made it a race thing, which while I do think there are levels to it, it it's the, the key part that I was missing that directly connect to me because when I walked in rooms, I'm like, I am a black woman and y'all don't think I hear, I'm, I belong here and then because you guys don't think it, it feeds on my insecurity. So now I don't think it. So now it's like, we both know that I don't belong here, but I'm here. And then I have to, I looked at it like I have to be super successful so I can run from the fact that I don't belong here. I had it backwards. Here I am overachieving, getting my extra credit, doing the most, being overtly kind to a, a deficit of myself and my character and my mental health. So I can say, see, look, I do belong here. Look at all these things I'm doing here. Not, bitch, you're already doing this shit and you still don't think you belong here. I had it wrong. So today I just, I just gifted myself with a new understanding of a word and a term and a reality for me that I am now gonna work through, not really, with you guys. Um, so now that I have this new definition, I, I, I keep, I'm, I'm, I'm really here. It's, it's, it's so, it's so clear as a collection of feelings of inadequ inadequacy that persist despite evident success. When I talk about every fucking thing on this podcast, from my shoe collection to my job, to the not paying rent, to living in New York, to having the ability to leave if I want to, to being able to be so rich, I can walk into a PhD and be paid for all these things are successes. All these things are successes and bragging rights. And even I, I subconsciously say them to brag, even though they don't make me feel good. I know they can trigger other people because of their lack and their want, right? A lot of us in our certain statuses will act like, oh, fuck the status. But anytime we get a chance to tell you the status, we throw it out. So that's what I was doing. I was like, oh, I got this. 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 But I don't have what I want, what I want, what I want, what I want, what I want. Fully, 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 insecurely, ungratefully landing, leaning on all of these successes, but because these successes didn't measure up into what I wanted, what I thought I deserved, what I should, should have, should have listened to Kanye episode eight of the podcast. All these shouldas have told me that these successes are givens, like almost like bitch, duh. Like this is this, excuse me, this is uh, the flat line. Like this is the bare minimum of like your Maslow's success hierarchy of needs. Um, and what, <laughs> like what, like bitch, you just said you came from Cleveland, Ohio, ghetto, alcoholic mom, abused, neglect, could have been raped, was raped, all this shit. And you're sitting here in all this wealth and abundance and, and power and privilege and, and laissez fair, lazy success. And you're sitting here feeling like you don't deserve it and you don't belong in it and you don't even want it because you want more. What? Like, I'm sorry, I have to, do, what? Like, what? Like, who, who am I? What, you know? And then I gotta do this. All of that shit, all that confuzzled shit. Like, I didn't wake up confuzzled. My life has confuzzled me, nigga. Like, the page, the patriarchy has confuzzled me. Heteronormatives and 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 the things that the things that have have melted me are the same things that have molded me. In the sense of like, I grew up aspiring to be the fucking best or living the best or being the best. Like I used to say, I wanted to be or I want. Like I grew up with a fucking unrealistic meter of success because I grew up on movie magic and TV magic where you can be a fucking lawyer and have a doctor who has a private practice and still have five kids, three grandkids, a cousin, a brownstone in Brooklyn, which is actually in Manhattan and it's in my fucking neighborhood. You thinking you can go to seek the first as Claire Huxtable and achieve all of that and still be funny and fine and sexy and not broken and not touched. And now while Felicia Rashad, damn it, is actually living her Claire Huxtable life, I don't know all her stories, but some people do make that talented tenth. Some people get it a little bit easier. Even in the black community, there are variants of, of success and ease. And, and those of us who pivot to try to get the Huxtable dream and some of us who are already Huxtables wishing they had the good times dream because they don't feel secure in their blackness because they've had wealth as well. Like, why can't you be black and wealthy? See, these are all the things I'm dealing with while thinking that I am navigating imposter syndrome all the way incorrectly because I had the wrong definition of it. 
Now, that's Chloe in her nine to five. That is Chloe in her collegiate thinking you have to have degrees to prove what you know, even though you know more than they could have ever taught you. Another form of imposter syndrome, a huge part of racism and Jim Crow and continuously eating away at the black brain is they also do that. They do this thing and say, yeah, yeah, you are all these things that we made you to be, but we're going to use them against you and say, how dare you smoke crack or be a crack baby or grow up in the ghetto when, when you brought us here to the ghetto. Uh, middle Passage, zero stars, probably would not recommend that shit. Um, so then on top of that, you, you, you give us this like, but they do the yet. Like, oh, you're in the, the ghetto and all this and that, but like you haven't made it yet. And then they tell you what you do to make it. This is how you make it as a black kid. This is what I learned how to make it. When you make, when I was young, I was mm, four, five, six, whatever. The, the marker for success when I was five or six was graduate high school. All right, so bitch is on her way. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now I'm in middle school. 11, 12, 14, 15. They're like, okay, yeah, high school, you're already here. So you know what you need? You need to get a bachelor's degree because your high school degree is really worth nothing. That high school diploma is like a GED. That's what they say. It's equivalent to a GED. It should be equivalent to a GED, but the shit about that is y'all don't make the GED equivalent to a high school diploma. So when you get these people who you've changed, I don't want to say the key word yet, but I'm going to revisit that. So it should be equal to a GED because you tell people who are seeking a GED, it will make them feel like they have a high school diploma but then you tell people with a high school diploma that it's shitty you see that that's a break one but i didn't get the ged i got the diploma do 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 i graduated like fourth in my class like do 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 and when i say my class we had five schools inside of one i was number four inside of a school because i know some of my listeners are there and they love their scores because we do this thing but i will be spe specificity specific okay do 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 so now i'm, I'm like 10th 11th I'm like okay yeah you're here but you know what really you really need you got to get a you got a degree you got to go to college like and here's me who saw Claire Hustle. I was like, duh, I was already on my way to college. Y'all didn't have to say it, but I was going to do it on my way to college. Go to college. So for me, the goalpost, that's what they do. They move the goalpost. They move the fucking goalpost. So young me, her, get a high school diploma. Me, like, literally about to cross the finish line. They're like, oh, no, get a get a degree. Okay, so do, 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 degree. Now, that was a little bit more challenging because no, everybody else who I looked down in my family they were still measuring themselves to the high school diploma because a lot of them got them, didn't get them, like maneuvered life around in that place or found a way to be what they could perceive as success without having to go to college, right? Some people don't get the luxury to go to college because they have families to take care of, right? Like I, Chloe Beck was blessed because I did it traditionally. So I walked across the high school stage, do, 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 slide to the left, hey, hey, and I walked into Bowling Green State University, right? So now I'm in college. I am, I'm going to school for this. I'm going to school for telecommunications because I want to be Wendy Williams or music producer, all those things. I chronicled that shit somewhere, go listen. So now I'm like passionate. I'm passionate about this. I'm in college, right? And I, I did that thing. I did that thing where I went to go figure out, make sure I was still on track to, to my ultimate goal of success. And then I had a plan about how I was going to get there. I had my major set and my guidance counselor who her level of, her level of success as an Asian woman uh, the dynasty like they have generations and, and centuries worth of what you need to live up to and she's talking to me who her just get to high school right so then I'm like well shit I got to high school like the rest of this is free I have no no guidance I can't even see this I am I am Harriet Tubman in my way through this on my own so then my north star of, of an advisor is like hey 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 what you want to go to school for won't get you here you're going to be broke and poor here so it's pivot so basically she pivoted me to being a, a, a collegiate mammy. And then, you know, here I am doing what I do currently. So now that I got this bachelor's degree and I'm like, well, what the fuck? You know what they didn't do? They didn't even tell you. Like, they're like, oh, you like you're graduating. Good for you. But like, what are you going to do? Because nobody even wants a bachelor's degree because you're a woman. So like your bachelor's degree that is like hard to get is equivalent to a white man's uh, high school diploma. And then if you watch Scandal or you know that Scandal narrative, that means I got to do twice as much to get what he's getting at what I already have. So now what does that tell you? Here I am with my bachelor's he's down here with his high school diploma one two now I'm going to grad school do 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 grad school now grad school now grad school was cool right now I'm like I am in the talented 10th and but now I'm up here realizing the hierarchies of what they the goalpost doesn't move but depending on which rate run which race you run you are stagnant so like if you do something like, oh, I don't know, housing, or uh, uh, if you do something in admissions, or if you do something in this, it sets your trajectory up for what your growth is going to be instantly. If you fall for whichever career track trajectory, uh, they let you t they let you dibble and dabble and mm, taste this, taste this, taste this, but fully dangling your carrot because you're already sold. Mm -hmm. 
So, and that was me. So now I found, and once again, if I'm going to do it twice as hard, I went to the best schools ever to work and do the shittiest work sometimes. So that is Chloe Beck, the imposter. You see how that, what I'm, what sucks about my imposter syndrome is that like, while I am now just understanding the textbook definition of how I am already super successful, it's so hard to believe that you're super successful when they keep moving what success looks like, or they keep telling you like, yeah, you're successful, but like that's shaky or in order to really, be, it's like when they told slaves, uh, heaven is the promised land. Oh, endure all of this shit right now. Endure it, endure it, endure it, and then you'll get to heaven and you'll be free. So they say, oh, education is, is the key. Education is the key. And this whole fucking time I've been talented enough to not need a single degree. I just needed to believe in me and just have maybe one or two people who saw the dream. So now that's why I feel like an imposter. I feel like I'm an imposter because I'm taking a job from somebody who probably is passionate about this or being fed the same care to come over here to, to, to this free rent shit, right? When I should be pivoted so far, I should already be where I'm supposed to be, but because of imposter syndromes and, and goal movements and not having full definitions and understandings of what you're doing or where you're going or what you're choosing, then you wake up on Christmas day and have to tell your podcast that it's... You got imposter syndrome. So I just explained 17 different ways in which I have imposter syndrome and like they all kind of fight each other about which one is more prominent. I will say being transparent fully, uh, my job imposter syndrome is, is the most, it's winning, like it's like, it's Bowser at the end of the game because like that's something that I'm focused on more. But th they're winning the, 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 the race, but they're not winning the war because the war, my imposter syndrome comes here in creativity because I see people who... I, I say it all the time, stay on your own lane and, and mind your own business and get into your do 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 do. That was episode 12, the countdown. You should really go listen to it. The episode 12 is great. I highly recommend it. Um, I, t I talked about how I work so hard to mind my business and stay in my lane, but like when you are creative, when you are as talented as I think I am, or as people have liked, rate, comment, subscribed, and shared to tell me, um, because similar. Oh my God, I can reference so many other episodes and points that I have to pull together. I am still not sure where my timeline lies and if if I'm doing enough to get where I'm going or like what's the hindrance and like, well, I know um, I said, I've said it before, I say it all the same. I think it's all true. Like there are people it takes 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, Ava DuVernay didn't pick up a camera to 40, all those statistics, uh, all these people like, oh, they're older. So let's not, they're moving. The, that is one goal line that they're moving that I'm appreciative of, but I still live in a track. I just happen to be in a track that told us 30 under 30, 20 under 20, 10 under 10, success, success, success. And now I'm still running that race thinking, fuck, you're 33. You're going to be 34 in a month and a half. What have you, what have you accomplished? And then society is now saying, don't worry about it because life doesn't end after 30. But I just happen to still be in the same race of make it by 30, even though I'm realizing that that, that goal has moved. I still kind of want to, this is one of the goals I want to be because as you heard me, I beat all my, my, my goals, right? Goals, goals, goals. So I really do want to pop off or go viral or do all the bullshit so I can work how I want to work and do what I want to do and take endorsements I want to take and be sponsored so I can tell you, hey, if you go to eBay, uh, their shoes are authenticated like StockX, but we're not going to say StockX. We just want you to know you can go buy Yeezys and shit at eBay now. I want those kind of ads. I want to be able to do that kind of shit, right? So the imposter in me is like, you are so talented, but are you talented? Or are you just faking talented? Because most people who are talented that you see because you look up I look up, I don't really look at my peer group. And the, one, and the minute when a peer that I was chilling with starts to look like they're going up, now I'm like, damn, it's like, <laughs> this is terrible, but because it's Christmas and God, this is like when they say like the rapture comes and they just start plucking people out and you're just down here like, am I in this 1200 or whatever that obscene number is of people who get left on earth? That's what it feels like when you see people walking into their greatness or doing something that you're like, ah. So it's like, oh, another one just found their window. Another, it's like, Or it's like the look who's talking sperm, but we're all fighting and, and I just keep watching people get in and, and birthing their, their businesses and their dreams and all their shit. And I'm like, are you birthing mine? Am I neglecting? Is it me? Like, am I already sitting on my creative um, stability and I'm already looking too far ahead and not appreciating the success of what's happening? Yes, because why? Imposter syndrome. Um, <laughs> It's crazy in my brain. And I just like, I want you guys to know it's like 9 a.m. Christmas morning and I have on some Christmas pajamas that I've never worn ever, but they're from one of my exes. 
um, she really did do a great job on them. And I was like, fuck those pajamas because fuck that bitch. But actually, thanks, dummy. I got some great pajamas out you, bitch. <laughs> right out. Uh, <laughs> Um, I was also going to tell you guys, like, if I wasn't going to pull the trigger on one imposter syndrome, I was going to tell you it was going to be one hangover because I did it. I wasn't going to do it. I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did it. I went out, me and my partner went out and bought a $99 bottle of Hennessy. No chasers, just a big gangster gallon of, actually, because I said I wanted to learn, it's 1.75 liters. So for those of you who even know what that means, like, I don't know what that means, but I do know what it says on the bottle. We bought 1.75 liters of Hennessy for, it came out to 108.34 or some shit like that. Uh, and so, of course, I drank some and I sang a bunch of songs and I, I just, I navigated Christmas Eve depression well. Um, while I was drinking it and numbing, I was more so numbing my back because my back was hurting. But like while I was numbing and doing the thing, it really did not feel, and I'm so grateful, like I mentioned, it still didn't feel like a heavy, depressed numbing. It felt like a, you're down, so you want to have a good time numb. It wasn't a, we're already down, let's stay down. It was a, like, get on up type of vibe. So I'm appreciative for that. But because of that, that's why this sounds so free and so light because I'm a little hungover and a little still drunk. Um, but that's okay because I drink responsibly. I drink in the comforts of my home. I, I don't go out and drive and drink or I don't text inappropriately most days. Uh, so I'm proud of that. But I will say that the hangover is a direct manifestation of imposter syndrome because another reason why I was truly drinking is because I was too anxious about finishing this episode. I was too nervous. I was struggling to think like, oh my, I this is, <laughs> this is, I really hope you guys are watching on YouTube and listening. Can you listen and watch and pair them up so I can get the views and the streams at the same time? But like, I'm giving the camera so much truth right now. Um, I am scared of, of completion and success and closure and I'm insecure about it. And it's something that comes up in my imposter syndrome. It's like, it's one of those things where like, if you compose what you think is the perfect song, or if you be like, hey, I'm a book writer, um, which I got this from a dumbass movie. But if you're like, oh, I'm writing a book and someone hits you with like, it's taking you 10 years and you say something to the effect of, it takes a long time to build a world. And in and, and the normal person's mind, because we keep thinking about goals and how quickly things should get done and what timeline should be uh for me so the way that ended is that like the way I interpreted it was like bitch you're never going to finish that book it's been 10 years why did it take 10 years to write a book and then that's because we keep putting this urgency on things and then the movie ends when she actually does write a book and it's like a bestseller but the, it's like happiest it's a gay dyke movie on Netflix or some shit but anyway I digress but in that I think that's why I, I love or, or or have an addiction to a lack of a completed project because my insecurity lies around me with the imposter and syndrome is that if I complete something and it's a full body of work and I put my name on it and it does become something that's on my resume and it's what if it's not good enough what if that one thing you completed or you finished or you stuck to doesn't get you to your cherry picked this is what gets me there and I know social media, all these things say, oh, look at how many times this failed. And it took him 2,075 times to do the light bulb. He only had to get it right once. But when you see it happening in what looks like real 30 second time because of social media, you're like, bitch, am I really supposed to be 33 giving Instagram the podcast 12 years before it pops off? Why do I think that's not the answer? Why? Yes, bitch, if it takes 12 years, yes. <laughs> but because I live in this microwave generation of, of, of generation, a millennial, I'm a millennial, um, who happens to hang out with generation QZ, elemental P, um, everything looks expedited. So like, I was so insecure about finishing this because in my mind, I was already thinking like, is this something, a standard that you set that now every Christmas you got to come up with 12 somethings or like, can you just call it Podmas and, and tweak it or whatever? And like, I was already starting to put so much anxiety on what was next. And I was like, well, if I fail here, if I don't finish now, I don't even have to worry about being consistent. You're inconsistent <laughs> career coach. That's me. You know what, somebody, <laughs> somebody called me inconsistent and then I was like, yeah. I'm not, but I am <laughs> so inconsistent, but <laughs> tough titty, what can you do? Um, so I struggle with being consistent because I feel as though if like, I, I get so much pleasure and joy when like these 10, 15 episodes come out and they're good, but I'm like, 
what happens if every the next 10 or 15 aren't good or what if there's like a you don't get rave reviews so I like I, I pop out a little bit and then I pop back in and then I pop out so I'm like yeah bitch I'm still great but I pop out but I don't really want y'all to see me in this race where it might be a few months of like what the fuck happened you suck that's a terrible topic that wasn't funny but everything is not gonna be for everybody and like I one of my sorority sisters talked about episode nine because she's an avid listener shout out to you I love you you're like what of you are I can't wait to take you with me I'm so grateful for you um COVID wasn't all bad because COVID brought me someone back into my life that oh my god unstoppable now I'm not even gonna say what could have been but I'm so grateful for where we are now so Shaveda I love you and thank you um but anyway fuck her because she was talking about she loved the podcast, the, the the first season, except episode nine. She's like, oh, I couldn't get into it. And I was instantly mad. And I was like, bitch, did you watch the show? Like, it's about some specific. Of course, you didn't get into it because you didn't have all the facts. You were interpreting it based on the wrong definition. And then I was on the phone with another sorority sister. And we were like, I was like, you know what? I get that. And then, like, instantly it came to me, like, not every episode is going to hit for Shaveda. Not every episode is going to hit for every person. But I know there's somebody out there who is equally as passionate about, um, the show or, or the topic and it will be for them so realizing that your artwork isn't going to be for everyone but like at least one person will get there because i see it in real time me and my partner talk about people who we've seen pop off or go viral or have the crazy youtube career and i'm like who is watching this shit this shit is not for me and then i was like ah it's not for you that doesn't mean it's not for somebody so pushing through even the days where you're insecure about what it's going to be insecure somebody's going to get it or listen to it or like it and in real time god has shown me because god continues to be my my north star he shows me that every time even the most obscure things someone is listening and someone will bring it up and someone will mention it or someone will dm me someone who you would have no clue like i have a good friend now like we've been friends in high school like we fell apart with social media she reached out like oh i love your podcast she's in fucking uae she's fucking giving me views and streams way on the other side of the world like i can't even point that out on the map because i don't even know the state letters um so I'm bringing home to her like she's you know like where people are getting to meet me in ways that they never had the chance to so I'm in so clear about the longevity the success the failure of it but like I'm already standing on my success and I need to stop being an imposter because the project is already great and if this is the last fucking episode I have 24 episodes of fucking fire fire hot tracks <laughs> Oh man. Um, so, and I, yeah, I think imposter syndrome, now that I have a new definition, it does. I can talk about it in relationships. I'm, I'm, I'm an imposter because I might not be as much of a stud daddy dyke as I keep telling myself I am, but I really am trying to manifest it. Um, you know, I, I might not be this monogamous person who is Claire and Cliff, like Claire and Cliff didn't have a, a third, but I'm like, why can't I? Uh, I'm realizing that I can spring board off of and turn my life into what I want my Cosby show to be. Um, so I, I've been an, I've been an imposter in, in so many ways of like I've been an imposter by being silent. Every time I sit in a room because there's three or four people who don't want me or don't appreciate me or don't see my worth. So then if they don't see it, I don't share it. And I think some of that's okay. Like, why would you give your best material to a nigga who not going to fucking get you? Like that nigga in my rainy, he sold him them songs. I was like, nigga, they not good enough. And then they recorded it with a bunch of white people. Got me a cat of that cat. That also happened to Dreamgirls. Um, so I used to do this. Like, I do this thing where I'm like, I shut down. Like, if you if you can't welcome, come into the stage, Chloe Beck. If you're not bringing me that kind of energy, I don't say shit. But then that makes me look like a wallflower. Like, I'm not invested, that I'm not engaged, that I don't care, that I don't have an opinion. And therefore, I become an imposter in my own world. You know, like... It's crazy how imposter syndrome works. It's crazy how all the other things work with the other things. It's like, you know, blessings to those who only have to deal with one thing. Like if you are white, straight, and all you have to worry about is being a woman, congratulations, Merry Christmas, y'all won. Or like if you gay, but you're a white man, good job. Like you, cool. <laughs> Welcome to the Oppression Olympics. I think you're gonna win that race, but you probably shouldn't be running it because opinions or if you just happen to be fat but confident sexy got money for the clothes don't have to worry about it are in every other norm of hetero whatever big girl back it up but if you have all of that shit you are destined to be an imposter because you are fighting so many battles that are fighting each other and you're just in the middle like uh you really become that meme like this is fine 
So me as an imposter, I have sat in the this is fine for so long, but now it's starting to get too hot. It's starting to burn a little bit. It's starting to get a little whew, uh, menopausal in here almost. So it's like, it's not fine anymore. So like now working to maneuver through understanding that you do suffer from imposter, imposter syndrome and what will be your, your safe word or your trigger or like, what are you gonna do about it? Because now I, it's, I'm always on step one. Like this whole project so far has been step one. Oh, I'm insecure about this. But the next thing will be like, well, what are you gonna do about it? So for me, the step one is being able to acknowledge, yes, I, I in fact have imposter syndrome, but then it's like gonna be me having to educate and not say I know everything about imposter syndrome. It's going to have to be me educating myself on it, finding triggers, assessing when it it feels most rampant or or when I when it comes up to pass most, and then determining what you're going to do in that space of being an imposter. Um, so that's my Christmas gift to me: more fucking homework and life work and work work and. Uh, but you know what? I'm on vacation, so I don't have to do any of that shit right now. I. Just, <laughs> not on duty, out of office, away messages are up. But when we come back, whenever we come back, because this is it, guys, 12 days of podmas, I'm done. That's all I got to say. I don't want to talk no more to y'all. I'm an imposter. Y'all probably an imposter. We're going to imposter together. I had some good pasta last night. Um, I had one <laughs> imposter syndrome that manifests in 9 million ways. And um, I'm not an imposter when it comes to my passion for this project. And I hope you know that I love it. And if you don't, that's okay, because I know that I love it. And I know that this is just one of many amazing projects because like all good songs that you write, they all end eventually. And the luckily for us, the way that the media works, you guys can always press replay. So if you don't hear from me for a month, two months, 10 months, go back and listen to every episode again and find something new. Look into the rafters of my episodes where I used to look in the rafters of metal and see what you can pick out. Because when I listen to them, there are so many things that makes me want to springboard another episode. So while I'm not telling you when season two is coming back, just know it's coming back. And it's going to be beautiful just as it is. No more pressure added. Very Merry Christmas. Um, I'm definitely going to reach out before the new year. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but happy, happy new year. Um, I hope this is a year that you can lay a lot of things to rest. And, and, and work really hard to find your new or your your pivot or your, and if you love the trajectory you're on, stay the course, but I hope this is a time and a, a, a space where you can really sit with you and, and, and kind of do some of the things that you want to do. Um, Merry Christmas. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. This has been the 12 Days of Podmas from your insecure as fuck ass host, Chloe Beck. And maybe this time next year, we won't have $12,000 worth of credit card debt, so maybe we can do something like, oh, I don't know, go live. You know, maybe hold some Zoom conversations with Chloe. I would love that. Um, manifesting my come up. Um, if you guys are on Clubhouse, I too am on Clubhouse at Zora Knows, K-N-O-W-S. I know nothing about Clubhouse. I'm just excited to have gotten in. I got an invite semi-early into this beta version. I just, I'm a wallflower, but I feel like an imposter there because it's like double dutch. Do you speak? Do you not? How do you speak? Host in a room. Bitch, I'm barely struggling to host this podcast. But like, I want to engage with you guys. Please engage with me. Instagram, DMs, Twitter, uh, InstaQuareThePodcast at gmail.com. I would love to hear about some of the things that you're you're addicted to, some of your bad habits, some of your syndromes, like your five failed friendships. I want to know. I want I want you guys to tell me about your time because I do love conversations with Chloe. And while I love to talk to me, I would also like to talk to you. Until then, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I love you guys. Bye.